Hello and welcome dear children. Today I am going to teach you English grammar part 3 figures of speech. In my previous video I have already introduced what are figures of speech. Today we will study few more figures of speech with few examples. Without a further delay let us check out few examples. For example the first one let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Second, I felt happy because I saw the others were happy. If you observe both the sentences carefully, you will find some phrases, some words are continuously repeated. It is repeated just to convey the message okay, and give a clear idea to the reader. That is why the poet uses repetition as a figure of speech. So we can define repetition as the technique of repeating the same words and phrases is called repetition. Let us see a few more examples. The first one, I have told you a million times. Can somebody tell a million times? The answer to this question is definitely no. A person can never tell somebody a million times. The second example. My backpack weighs a ton. You know what is a backpack? It is a small bag that you wear on your back. You can understand the size of that backpack also. Can it actually weigh a ton? A ton is a bigger unit of weight, isn't it? So definitely a small backpack cannot weigh a ton. Still, the writer is using such kind of sentences. He just wants to emphasize on his thoughts, isn't it? He just wants to give more importance to what he is going to say. So, such kind of statements are called as hyperbole. They are simply exaggerated statements. In Hindi, we can call it as bada chada ke bolna. In Hindi, we say, no? So, it's just like the same. Okay, so a definition to hyperbole, hyperbole, sorry, we can say that hyperbole is a major exaggeration or overstatement. Let us have some fun children. You all join with me saying this poem. You all know this poem, okay? So join along with me. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-O, and on his farm he had some ducks, E -a -e -a -o. And a quack quack here and a quack quack there Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack Old MacDonald had a farm e -a -e -a -o. And on his farm he had some pigs e -a -e -a -o. And oink oink here and oink oink there Here oink, there oink, everywhere oink oink I hope you all enjoyed the poem. So in this poem, imagine the poem without the words quack and oink. We definitely lose the fun. So the word quack and oink are called as onomatopoeia. Such words are used by the writer just as a fun element so that the reader may enjoy the story, they enjoy the poem. So such words are called as onomatopoeia. When you see this, you often hear this. Honeybee. What sound does honeybee make? Buzz sound. Cell phone. Rings. Isn't it? Duck. What sound of the duck? It is quack. We have already seen in the poem. Quack sound is of duck. So a word which imitate a sound is onomatopoeia. Okay, so let us check out these words, how they are used in a sentence. Let us see the first example. The buzzing bee flew away. Here, you can understand that the sound of the bee, that is the buzzing sound, isn't it? So the buzzing word imitates sound. Okay. So, uh, we can see in the second example also, the sack fell into the river with a splash. So, the sound of uh, the bag that fell down is 
splash sound that it fell into the river. So splash word imitates imitates sound. Okay, so we can clearly understand the definition of onomatopoeia. It is a word which imitates the natural sound of a thing is called onomatopoeia. Let us see the last figures of speech that is personification. Let's check out the first example. The car danced across the icy road. Personification is very easy children. It is something related to the person. If you see very carefully the example, the car. The car is what? It is a non-living thing. Okay, a non-living thing which is given the quality of human being. Can you see the quality of human being? Yes, it's correct. The quality of dancing. Human beings dance, isn't it? Cars never dance. The dancing quality is a human quality, which in a sentence is given to a non-living thing, that is the car. So, when a sentence contains a non-living thing, which is given the quality of human being, that is dancing or any other, okay, so such quality of human being if it is given to the non-living thing it is called a personification let's check out the second example the angry clouds marched across the sky can you guess which is the non-living thing over here yes it's clouds so clouds are non-living isn't it they are non-living they are given the human quality now which is the human quality being angry is a human quality then marching is a human quality so we can understand that clouds which is non-living thing is given the quality of being angry and marching which is human quality okay so such sentences are known as personification so we can define personification as personification is a literary device that gives human-like characteristics to non-human entities. So now I am going to give you some exercise to solve. Hope you all have understood whatever I have explained today.